views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm talking to you today from sunny arizona believe it or not but wherever you're listening from today it might be on kknw am 1150 in the seattle area It might be on WBLQ AM 1230 in Rhode Island, Connecticut, or New York, somewhere across the United States on cable, radio, network, or anywhere around the world on Transformation Talk Radio. But wherever you're listening from today, you're going to be very excited. You're sticking with us because we have a fascinating conversation about something called the trust technique. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, But first, I want to say a proper hello to my better half in the studio, Mr. Benny, hey, thanks, for, thanks for working out all this technology so we can talk to you from various places in oh, the world. Oh, it's, it's what I do, and I trust in my own uh, ten fingers and in my ten <laughs> toes to make it all happen, and, and that you trust me that everything will go smoothly. Oh, yeah, it always does. And when there, whenever there's a glitch, you, you know how to do the, the little little dance to, to make it all right, so mm-hmm. I appreciate that. And we're, we're talking from... Place in the, another place in the United States, besides mm-hmm. the studio, and somewhere across the Atlantic Ocean. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, anyway, you know, Benny, we get inundated with requests to have people on the show, and of course, we have our long list of people that who we greatly admire and want to have on the show. Um, many of them are big names. Some of them are just up and coming. Well, I tell you, it's not often that I will see something on Facebook and know that I need to talk to this person. I, I saw this video on something called the trust technique, and it's a way to sort of connect with animals in a new way to help them heal and help humans heal as well. And I watched this video in awe, and I had chills head to toe, and I thought, I have got to talk to James French. He is the developer, the pioneer of this trust technique, and it connects animals with people, but in a way that allows for expansion on, on, for both the animals and the people. He's a Reiki master. He's an animal com- communication teacher. And he's always had a connection to animals from a very early age when he expressed interest in working with horses. I've always loved horses. I haven't gotten to work with them very often, but whenever I get to ride, it just feels so wonderful. In 1999, James says he found the missing link when he started working with Reiki. Over the years, he basically developed his animal communication while furthering his Reiki mastery. And in 2007, after teaching many animal communication courses and Reiki classes, James, with his partner Shelley, founded this thing called the Trust Technique. And it's an amalgamation of all these disciplines that James had learned up to that point, and it's very powerful, and I'm so glad that you're here joining us from across the Atlantic Ocean, James French. Welcome, James. Hi, Christy. Thank you. You know, um, I've always felt a special connection with animals as well from, you know, from a very early age, and in Mm -hmm. fact, when I was looking at some of the um, dysfunction around me, shall I say, amongst humans, I felt particularly connected to animals, and I thought there's there's something about animals that's very different. Even though I understand we humans are animals, we get in our own way, right? Um, but when I was looking at you interacting with horses on this introductory video on the trust technique, um, I was just amazed. What led you to developing this trust technique? 
Well, Christine, I mean, my development started again from a, a very early age. I, I had what you could describe as a, a tragic childhood. Lots of different mm. events happened to me. My sister had died. Aww. My parents had split up. And uh, I had a, a stepfather which um, turned out to be quite an aggressive alcoholic. Oh, but dear. Uh, at the time, I was surrounded by animals. I lived on a farm. So I had at least seven dogs around me, three horses at least, and, and there were sheep on the farm. And these guys were really my little saviors. Oh. I, I discovered animal relationship at a very early age, not, not through curiosity, but more of a need. Right. So even though my environment felt incredibly unsafe, I, I just actually had a very strong support network, as it were, from mm -hmm. my four-legged friends. Right, right. So relationship was the thing that I found at a very early age, but a, a deep relationship, a meaningful one. Mm -hmm. So what makes a relationship with an animal different from a relationship with another human? Well, I, I think the relationships are in, incredibly similar. You know, how we treat others, how we treat animals. How we treat animals is, is kind of a reflection of how we can treat others and ourselves as well. Uh -huh. uh, animals are, are particularly good listeners. Mm. We're particularly fast in our minds, so we forget to listen to our animals. Uh -huh. But when there's a, a need there, when you're not feeling particularly well and they pick up on that, right. so that they're, they're incredibly compassionate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very observant. <laughs> yeah, I know that um, with cats I've had over the years, if you know anybody in the family has been ill, they're right there. And I know that scientists are actually discovering that cat purring, the frequency can, can positively affect um, the healing of various sorts of things. And, you know, I, I wonder about where we're at on the planet right now because... You know, with the Internet, we're starting to get more and more of the cruelty towards animals mm -hmm. exposed, and there's been an outpouring of compassion. Do you feel like this is a time on our planet where we're, we're supposed to shift the way we interact with animals? Absolutely. You know, the the time where we think we're superior to these beings is, mm -hmm. and, and we have to be boss over them, uh, all of these, these different conditions that we've grown up with actually stops us from seeing the magic of the relationship and the intelligence that these beings actually have. Mm -hmm. So is there a time for us to slow down and truly listen to other beings? Most definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Is is that ability transferable? Absolutely. We're doing um, pilot schemes with children at the moment, which um, are children hard to help. And they use our technique to build relationship, uh, mainly at the sanctuary. This is Main Chance Sanctuary, where we have a herd of 29 horses. Uh -huh. uh, each, each horse has... Uh, it's an own amazing story, usually a tragic story because they're all rescue horses and the children that come in have their own unique stories and this narrative effect of how they link in with the horses and understand themselves and how they apply this technique, which I'm sure we'll go into detail in a mm -hmm. minute, um, right. but the technique itself is about reducing thinking levels. And we live in a society where we overthink, and that right. overthinking creates a lot of anxiety. Uh -huh. And then our law of attraction is based on our actions, which are the decisions we made on anxiety. And it's a vicious cycle we live in. And, mm, and right. then there's not enough time, and we're angry and worried and all the rest of it. So by slowing ourselves down, um, the trust technique actually reduces thinking levels between animals and people in a in a a very simplified meditative state, but very powerful. Uh -huh. And what these children suddenly realize is that how they're feeling has a direct effect on another being. So these horses will actually go so relaxed that they will lie down and go to sleep. So uh -huh. suddenly um, these children are discovering that 
actually how how I perceive or how, if I slow down, if I'm control of my thinking levels, then my interaction not only has this huge profound effect where I feel relationship, mm-hmm. but it, it also has a byproduct of confidence and trust. Now, right, this... right. And, that's, and that's huge with animals, whether you're talking about a family pet or, you know, a horse that you're 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 planning on riding or connecting with, um, yeah, that's that's huge. Uh, massive, but it goes so much more than that because it's also huge for us human beings. When we we work with uh, what I can call regard, and I'll go uh-huh. into this in more detail. So it's it's the present moment or mindfulness, but we use regard, which is a true sense of listening. Uh-huh. Now, when I'm using the example of the children, when the children realize this, usually the first thing they do is they relate to the animal in themselves. So, for example, we have three little cobs that were abandoned, and uh-huh. they really relate to children that may have been adopted in their life because deep down they also feel abandoned. So the uh-huh. first thing uh-huh. they do is they relate to the story of the animal. Then they help that animal by reducing its thinking levels and and help it to let go of its past. Uh And in the same process of doing that, so is the child. But then they can relate this not only to, oh gosh, that's like me who got damaged, but then Uh later on they start to relate this to how they interact with other people. So how they would relate with their teachers, how they would relate with their parents. And then the next step is ultimately how much they can regard themselves. You know, how are they in themselves? You know, what happens when they get stressed? If they've got a tool and they can reduce their thinking levels, then it changes all of that law of attraction. Because when we're peaceful and we're calm, we see things in a completely different way. And we make different decisions, which lead to a different law of attraction of actions. Right, and create different um, energetic that that's being emitted, you know, from our being as well, which which shifts our reality. Absolutely. Yeah. So, So, and and all of this stems from a consciousness to know what your thinking levels are doing, mm -hmm. not that we're asleep and mindless and just repeating the same patterns again and again but we actually have a, a means to break the cycle and find a little bit more of our authentic self. Uh, not the overthinker, but the the person who, you know, when we go into this meditative state and we are no longer in the process of thinking, we're in a very natural state of being. And that natural state of being is probably our most authentic part of us. We have many different characters inside of us. We have the, right, right. Um, this person, the one that's going fast and has got everything to do, the one that worries about stuff. But underneath all of those, there's this uh, very peaceful being that has the, the deepest of wisdoms. Mm-hmm. And I know that many of our listeners are on their conscious paths and they want this for themselves, but how you connect with animals is fascinating. We're going to go to a quick break, but more with James French on the trust technique when we return here in a few moments. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is a complete approach to wellness. Serenity Bliss offers integrated therapies for whole body health. From facials to massage, from laser skin treatments to herbal wellness, from chiropractic care to energy healing. We work with teens who want to put their best face forward, adults of all ages who want to maintain that youthful glow, and anyone who wants to enjoy vibrant well-being head to toe. 
Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is bringing the European approach to restoring natural beauty and wellness here to the Seattle area. Located on the east side off the beaten path, yet just minutes from the freeway. If you'd like to experience the joy of relaxation, skincare excellence, and total wellness, then come experience your Serenity Bliss. To learn more or to schedule an appointment, visit SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. That's SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. Or call 206-229-0086. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basili is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Patshow.com for listening times in your area. I'm Peggy Snow with another Stellar Reflections Minute. Presence, or what we think of as being fully in the moment, is a key element in the process of healing work. As a practitioner facilitating a session, genuine presence takes us out of our heads where we tend to decide what is and maybe what should be for the client and moves us into direct experience where we're available to witness the person in their wholeness. In this receptive realm, our senses are heightened and expanded, allowing us to perceive what's seeking to unfold and to interact in the moment. There's something profoundly powerful that happens when healing is approached in this simple, pure way. Balance can be restored and healing can take place on multiple levels. If you'd like more information about the services we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425 425- Nine 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 eight three six. Welcome back to the Christine F. Church Show. I'm having a conversation today with James French, whose video on the trust technique grabbed my attention from Facebook. It's a powerful experience just watching it. And I think about learning this technique, about animals utilizing this technique, and um, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued and, and inspired. James, before the break, you were talking about developing regard for animals. Yes. And I, you, you differentiate between the concept of respect. What's the difference? Oh, you've broken up a little bit. Yeah, Christine, there. go ahead and repeat that question one more time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that you, before the break, you were talking about re- having regard for other animals. Yes. And you don't use the word respect. Do you differentiate between the two? Oh, massively. So for me, the word regard is to observe, is to connect. It, in my opinion, is the ability to actually really value an opinion. Now, the word respect is one that can be used on that gentle, compassionate understanding, but it can also be used in a fear level. So we can respect people through fear, Mm -hmm. like our scary boss, and we can, um, but you couldn't regard somebody with a fear state. Okay. So how does fear get in the way then? Oh, massively. (laughs) Well, as I mentioned before, um, we look at reducing thinking levels and overthinking is what I would call a state of fear. So when we reduce our thinking levels, well, you know, thinking is an interesting thing. When we overthink, we become more separated from our environment. And we know that because if we're really upset about something and our friend is talking, we don't even hear them. Right. So um, when we're overthinking, we, we become separate. We become the I. It's all about us. 
when we reduce our thinking levels, we start to become part of everything. We become aware of our environment, and we we actually become much more aware and connected to the beings around us. Mm-hmm. So so it's more of a unity than a singular. And when we look at uh, you know regard is an ability to to really have our focus outside of ourselves for another being. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fascinated by um, the different ways that people will deal with and handle animals. Um, had a friend come over recently who wanted to just sort of grab my cats and and hold them and pet them, and one of them would have absolutely nothing to do with that. How is our imposing what we think is best for an animal um, in conflict with what you're saying? Well, all of those areas that you're just talking about are feared states, and they're in different degrees. So a feared state of, I need that cat to be on my lap so I can stroke Uh it, is is a feared state. And the more we want it, usually the further the cat goes away, which is then our rejection, which is a fear (laughs) in its own right. Sure. (laughs) So, and, and it leads really nicely, I mean... A lot of animals, especially in the horse world, we've been conditioned to think that we do have to be in a feared state with them. They have to know who boss is. And right. we then, you know, one of my biggest dreams in that video was that we can adopt a wiser understanding that recognizes the difference between fear and trust motivation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, horses, they have aids of making them move forward like sticks and spurs and uh, everything is all very restrained and controlled. And yet these are magnificent beings. If we slow down enough, um, whenever I ride, I do it with no tack and I ride through the woods. We, we are based on feeling and uh, oh, okay. so, so you're strong enough. <laughs> so you don't, you don't have a bit and reins and a saddle, all that. Nothing. Is that right? Nothing. Nothing. It's a it's yeah. a naked horse. Naked riding, you can call it, but it is the horse that's naked. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I, I, beyond um, the, just the concept of having to climb up on a horse and 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 you know, be able to reach to to climb on back their backs, that must require a whole lot of trust as a human oh. being. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's trust and understanding. You see, when a, an animal's... We, we use a very simple meditation, uh, meditative state. It's a okay. state of being in the present moment, and it's based on understanding that animals and humans react to each other's feelings. So if we're stressed, they get stressed, or if they're okay. stressed, we get stressed and fearful. And that concept, what we've done is we use the present moment, which then means that animals start to react to peace of mind, which peace and unpeace can't be in the same place. So then they let go of their thinking and their mind comes down until it's connected with ours. Uh It's a little bit like Avatar, but um, rather than whopping your tail (laughs) into the animal, you're you're actually (laughs) doing this by reducing your thinking levels. Now, for me to ride on a horse with no tack, We have to be, if you imagine thinking levels from zero to ten, so zero is what I would call a deep sleep and it's a a highly healing state, which we can talk about later. And then if you look at the the higher, as we go up, so the ones and the twos, and ten is absolutely panicked. Now, I wouldn't get onto a horse unless, one, I was completely peaceful and uh-huh. the horse was completely peaceful. Now, something very magical happens there. Um, for me, riding with on a horse that's naked is so much safer than having bits in their mouths and saddles on their backs because I rely on our relationship and the trust that we have. If I uh-huh. had one ounce of nerves when I got onto that horse, that wouldn't be a truthful connection. Right. Oh, that's fascinating. Now, what what really is interesting is that there's two means of moving with them. Uh, When an animal's mind is very peaceful and when a human's mind is very peaceful, and and this is a rare state, I would have to say, in in most training, that when they're both peaceful, there's a gateway of communication available to you. So in other words, what you feel, they feel. So whilst we're riding, I can feel turn right, 
back and feel turn left. Um, you will see on that the end of the video, you'll see me riding a lovely bay horse. Uh, she's a beautiful horse called Pudding. Um, everything that we do is not trained. That was her first time in the woods being ridden with no tag. Wow. So it's, it's based on our relationship and our feelings. So one is that I can feel faster, slower, left or right. Uh, and the other one is, is really fascinating because if you're both peaceful, I can actually imagine a location with uh -huh. a reward behind it. So I'd imagine the field shelter and a big treat. <laughs> uh -huh, right. and they will, after about 30 seconds, off they go to the field shelter and I give them the treat. So you can wow, actually do this amazing. per location, not just by feeling. Mm -hmm. But I can, I can explain why that works as well. That'd um, be great. Um, because, you know, this isn't just about visualizing things, because how I see our main source of communication is that when I, I always describe this as if an alien came from another planet, how would you communicate with them? If they uh -huh. didn't understand your language or your gestures, how would you communicate with them? Which is pretty much... You know, if I pointed to a horse and told it and pointed somewhere else, it wouldn't understand uh -huh. me. It doesn't understand my gestures. Right. So the way I describe this is that every type of communication that we have stems from feeling. Uh, our science recognizes that our our body language is a main source of communication. So if somebody's really stressed, you can tell by the way that they're walking and the tone of our voice also portrays how we're feeling, uh, um, communication. But underneath all of those, underneath our imagination, underneath all of these expressions of communication and certainly language, we have to feel it first. So okay. the main source of communication that we have um, between people and between animals is feelings. Mm -hmm. Now, if that animal's feelings are absolutely on level 10 and it, it won't hear you, and if our feelings are all over the place, we're all separated and it can't feel you. But if right. we reduce thinking levels right down so that we're both intuitive, then just these little ripples of imagination. I might imagine something, but that imagination creates a feeling they pick up on the feeling and they relate to it in their own way. Uh huh. So, James, this is different than some of the animal communication that um, I've learned about, where mm -hmm. it's really about, it's not exactly bombarding them with images. I, I mean, I've, I've been taught that they understand images, but you're saying it's more feeling based, and instead of sort of, you know, giving them a lot of information through the images, creating this presence and then sort of you know, bringing a bit of the information forward, perhaps visually, but um, really more, it's a lot more letting go. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of, there's a couple of areas I can discuss with that. Um, one is some people are more audio, so they might have a sentence that they say in their mind. Uh, uh -huh. Some might be more visual, but again, it always relates to a feeling. Uh, so, for example, when we have a conversation with people, we feel what we're going to say. Now, some, uh -huh. someone might feel that as a touch sensation, or they might have a memory of their grandma, which is uh, the smell of a rose. Right. And that feeling will then stimulate the conversation. And where we go wrong as human beings is that we feel something, then we we talk it, the person hears the talk, and then they relate to their own feelings. Now that uh -huh. means that the feelings might completely mismatch because we're relying too much on the spoken word without actually the feeling underneath. So one side of what you were discussing, which is, yes, as a, as a communicator, what really happened, I mean, I've been teaching communication workshops for the last 15 years in the UK, and the concept there is that you reduce your thinking level so that you can put your attention to another being. You uh -huh. feel them, and then you can translate that information for the human that cares for the animal, and it changes their perspective and their uh -huh. actions around it so they understand it more. Now, with the trust technique, we, we took that and we simplified because, for me, simplification is, is actually the true spirituality. And right. there is one thing that we are saying to the animals when we get present. It, there's one feeling that we're animating, which is right now, be peaceful. 
Okay. Now, this has a huge impact. Uh, we have 29 horses. Some of them have the most horrendous stories that you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Now, their understanding of people was something to be terrified of. Now, right. when a person comes and, and bees with them and regards them in the right way, so we deliver the present moment through regard. Mm -hmm. And when that's delivered, the horse gets more and more sleepy, more and more relaxed, and may go completely to sleep. Now, when that being wakes up, what actually happens? So I'm only saying right now, be peaceful. Now, mm -hmm. its past condition was saying, well, I can't be peaceful with people because mm -hmm. they're not trustworthy. So I'm helping and I'm pacing and leading this animal into this really peaceful state. It goes to sleep. It wakes up and looks at me and goes, oh, what my past said and what my reality is now is different so one of them has to leave now if I've regarded that animal properly so I've gone at their pace they won't move away so they're not going to hold on to their past which means that then they let go of their past conditions mm. and, and I know you've got some amazing stories to share with us examples and a, a lot more information about how we can apply this trust technique but we have to go to a quick break more with James French in a few moments What does it mean to be healthy? For each of us, it means something a little different. Discover the art of herbal medicine, a natural way to help our bodies respond better to the modern day stress and toxicity of our everyday lives. Using organic herbs from around the world, the skilled herbalists at Urban Wellness in Kirkland can help you choose the herbs that are right for your body. Find your herbal solutions for common health issues at urbanwellness.com. That's H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Pat. Have you ever noticed that this reality doesn't actually work in a way that helps you thrive? I'm thrilled to announce that one of my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Glenna Rice, is bringing the incredible world of access consciousness to Seattle this December. You can register and learn more for the course that's coming up on December 4th by visiting Dr. Glenna Events. Com. And when you're there, you're also going to find another event coming up in January that Gary Douglas is doing himself. So register now and wonder no more. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. Years ago when facing cancer, without any immediate treatment options, I sought healing by making various life changes. For a while, I followed a very restrictive diet. I often found myself obsessing about which foods were good and which ones were bad. Then one day I realized I was consuming foods based on fear, fear of not getting well. But I didn't want to make choices out of fear anymore. I decided it was far better for my immune system if I allowed myself to experience the joy that came from, say, eating frozen yogurt, than it was for me to ingest the fear that came from avoiding it. Now, instead of choosing healthy habits based on fear, I try to make choices because they feel right and ultimately bring me joy and ease. How many of your healthy habits are really based on fear? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Are you ready to start winning at the game of life? Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life, is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, Intuit.com.
Welcome back to the Christine Upcher Show here on KKNW, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm talking today with James French, who is the, the developer of the trust technique. And it is a powerful approach to interacting with animals in a new way. And I have to tell you, James, you know, the videos I've seen, I know you've got a lot of videos online. And in fact, before we get into some of the amazing stories, how can people find their way to your videos and your training if they decide to become a practitioner? Yeah, so um, we've got a website which is trust-technique.com and we're also on Facebook which is a Trust Technique Animal Rescue and currently we, we're actually showing people exactly how to, how to do this. We're, we're giving our platinum video course free for a day. It was our way to sort of highlight to people that there, there can be a change and that uh -huh. it's, there's lots of videos about horses, dogs, cats, lions that we worked with in South Africa and it, they're very detailed tutorials to show you exactly how to do this. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably wonderful. the best, either Facebook or, or, or directly to our website. Mm -hmm. Trust-technique.com, yes. Yeah. So I know that um, through your videos I've watched some of the amazing stories. Can you share with our listeners about um, transformations in animal behavior sort of before and after the trust technique? Sure. Um, one that jumps my mind is the biggest horse we got on the park, which is a big horse called Ernie. Now, Ernie is 18 hands, with those who don't know the size of the horse, wow. I mean, he's huge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was brought up originally by a farmer who was terrified of him. As he got uh -huh. bigger, the farmer got more afraid. Uh -huh. Now, what Ernie learned, because this farmer used to beat him, oh. is that when somebody gets afraid the first thing you should do is attack them right. because that was his source of protection. So he learned oh. this very detailed um, condition. Uh -huh. Now, this didn't just happen with people. It also happened with other horses. So when I first saw Ernie, he was in a stable that was pretty much smaller than him. Oh. Uh, he had um, Dr. Death written on the door. No one was allowed oh. near him. Oh, and he, was, he wasn't allowed out. Um, he wasn't allowed out with other horses. Uh, he had kicked somebody in the head and put them in a coma. He'd bitten oh. somebody's fingers off, and oh. he'd bitten somebody's cheek out of their face. And he oh. had just about every horseman come and try and prove themselves with him. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, as soon as thinking levels went up, our big Ernie knew exactly what to do, which right. was to attack. So my first point of call was to get him out of the stable and into a field um, uh -huh. so that he, wasn't, he was so boxed up. So we, we did that. Now, I, I couldn't go in the field with him at the beginning. He was so conditioned. So I worked with him outside of the field. He seemed to enjoy a little scratch, which he had to do very carefully because <laughs> uh -huh, right. otherwise you got jaws attacking you. And yes. for a big horse, he was incredibly <laughs> agile. So part of our process is to hold them in this really peaceful state. And uh -huh. one of the areas which is really profound in the regard is that we allow a being to be who they are. We accept them for who they are. Mm -hmm. And then in that acceptance, we can get present again. And he expressed himself and he started to release. And we built up enough relationship that I could be in the field with him. Uh -huh. And my next step was to integrate him with another horse. And Berry, uh, who's a very cool horse, I put them into a big field and I cut the field in half with a, a fence and I would have time together. Now, uh -huh. Berry's a very wise horse. I let them come in. Now, Ernie would come straight over and totally disregard space. And what I understood from him is that there's this big guy that was totally misunderstood and mm -hmm. all he wanted was friendship but he mm -hmm. didn't know how to come about it he would be too threatening the horse would get afraid and he would pick a horse up and shake it like a rag doll oh, so we went through after I built my relationship with him I showed him how to be still and let a friend come to him uh -huh. and it was a fascinating process because you got this big guy that would be stationary going well, I'm still, and he's not here. <laughs> we worked with this, and he built an incredibly strong relationship with Barry. Uh -huh. Now, his story progressed so much that 
I mean, I knew that I'd really helped her when we had the dentist come. He had a bad tooth, which was probably another added extra that he was in pain for many years. Oh, and, yeah, uh, and that makes anybody grumpy. Yeah, well, and the dentist came, and I knew we had trust when the dentist had an electric drill in his mouth, and he was uh -huh. completely relaxed. Um, ah. no, no sedation or anything like that. But Ernie's story just evolved. Now, I did mix him with the rest of the herd. We have a big herd. We have 29 horses. We, uh -huh. we have, and, and out of those, we have 20 of them, which are actually one big herd. Now, I introduced him into the main herd, but he did so well that when we have new horses now, uh -huh. I need to put them in initially with a couple of horses which will not react. Uh -huh. And Ernie is now the best horse on the park for that role, and he has oh, helped my gosh. so many new horses, fear regression horses, fear flight horses, and he holds this magnificent space where they completely relax with him. So Ernie's That's a lovely huge story. Huge transformation, huge. And how many people are like that? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> and and when we do the human therapy, Ernie's <laughs> brilliant because so many people will actually relate to his narrative. Uh -huh. And and he's big and scary, and you have to overcome your thinking levels to be peaceful to be with him. And it, it's yeah. it's very deeply profound what his role is now. That's amazing. So. James, you know, you, you work with a lot of herd animals. Can you apply this technique to, like, pets in your household? Yes. I mean, most of my career is working with horses, dogs, and cats. Okay. Uh, especially dogs, because our cats are a little bit more independent, and they love peace of mind. But uh -huh. a lot of the, the animals that I worked with were predominantly dogs. Now, Animals and humans can react to each other very easily. So it could be that they got a rescue dog. It's got a behavioral problem because it's already got a condition. And then the human sure. reacts to that problem and goes, oh, my God, we got a problem. And then mm -hmm. the dog goes, oh, my God, and you're just as bad as everyone else because you're panicking as much as they do. Uh -huh. and, and we get out of control. Sure. Uh, then there is a human that can come into the dog was actually okay, but the human has got so much going on. Uh -huh. And then the, the animal picks up on the human's feeling, doesn't know how to express it, and expresses it as a behavioral problem. So this is the stressed person that comes home and then goes, oh, and that's the last thing I need is you chewing the carpet as well. Oh, no. <laughs> right, which doesn't and, help. <laughs> and then there's a, a level of law of attraction where that animal and that human were just meant to be together and, uh -huh. and maybe maybe that's the lady who felt abandoned because she didn't have parents that kept her and she was attracted she went to Battersea and for a dog and came back with a cat that was thrown out of a moving car uh -huh. because they actually both have a feeling of abandonment that they've connected to Sure. So sure. The, the trust technique was developed for this reason first, was to break those cycles of overthinking. Now, the beauty about this is that you can never just go mend an animal. Uh -huh. You actually have to help the human because if the environment doesn't change, if it was that uh, scenario of number two where the human comes in with all this stuff and the animal uh -huh. reacts to it... Um, it doesn't matter what I do with that animal. The environment's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Now, the trust technique teaches people to be peaceful, how to deliver that peaceful feeling to their animals. So as soon as they see their animal up, they would bring, bring their animal's mind down. Now, it doesn't just change the animal. Mm. For the human to deliver this, they are in a peaceful state themselves. So if that was the stressed person who came home, they get present with their animal. Well, guess what? The stress is gone. Right, so, right. We, we, we have to go to another quick break, James, yeah. but uh, more in a few moments. This is Peggy Snow, practitioner at Stellar Reflections with a Stellar Reflections Minute. So many people these days are trying to find ways to relieve their stress. What happens to our breathing when we're feeling overwhelmed and stress? When we tune in, we realize that we're either holding our breath or taking very shallow breath. To signal the body that all is well, which most of the time it is, 
Sometimes all that is needed is a nice, deep breath to break the cycle. First, exhale to get all the stale air out by engaging the abdominal muscles and blowing gently. Next, take a nice, full breath in, feeling it fill your body all the way down to your hips. Release fully and enjoy the freedom of movement. Notice how your body feels. Do you feel refreshed? Calmness is only a breath away. This has been a Stellar Reflections Minute. For more information about what we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you're ready to take your power back Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, Clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back to the Christine After Show here on KKNW, WBLQ, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, you know, James, this hour has just been flying by. Hasn't and I it? know you've got lots more wonderful stories. Do you have another story to share about the transformation of an animal and perhaps the humans that relate to that animal? Oh, okay, definitely. Well, another one, uh, we'll change animal topics, so we're going to go to lions. We were in South Africa about three years ago working with lions, and it was a very interesting concept because we weren't in with them. It was a a, a true lion sanctuary, Mm -hmm. and a lot of them had come from very abused areas, so they were used for canned hunting, which is pretty horrendous, and they have been in zoos, and one particular lion, really, we, we made a very strong connection. His name was Aris, and he was known as the Invisible Lion. He came from a zoo, and he would hide. No one would see him. He had about half an acre of land, and that's why he was known as the Invisible Lion. So I w- really wanted to make a connection with him, so I waited quietly after he'd been fed, and just got into a very present state and he did come out to eat his chickens and we felt quite honored because we hadn't moved much and the odd glance he looked over to me but even those odd glances was enough because then he just he didn't go and hide again he came up along the fence line and actually sat down so I started to work with present moment regard and this guy just looked at me. He, his eyes just looked through my soul. He, he'd never uh-huh. felt this sense of, of peace from a person before. And you could see so much cognitive skills happening in his mind. And our first session was quite extraordinary. He released a lot. Um, I then went. We were staying in the middle of the Lion Park. It was a little camp that we had. 
and it was dinner time and I, I just you see when you get present with an animal it this sense of peace so the closest thing I can describe it to is unconditional love uh-huh. and I just felt like a teenager completely love struck and Aww. I couldn't I couldn't do anything I was thinking about him so much so I, I just grabbed my camera and I went back to the spot where we were uh-huh. and he was waiting for me he was thinking about me as much as I was with him and over the space of the week we did a lot of transformational work he started to play he was rolling over playing with sticks wanting to play with the adjacent lions which were quite not amused by this but what it showed uh-huh. is that this guy never had a childhood uh, he was desperate for me to be in with him but we would have these moments and the most profound one was at the end it was the last day and LZ which was one of the lion keepers one of the staff there who loved him to pieces but never saw him I mean the experience because we teach rescue staff people how to do this we don't just go right. and do it we, we have a purpose behind it sure. and when, when she he looked at me and my communication with him was I've taught LZ how to do this I'm leaving now but I'm leaving you with this feeling and this lion looked at me looked at her looked at me got up from being in front of me, walked over to her, lay down and just looked at her. Wow. That, that's like total communication and acceptance. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so that, there's another level there. And, and, you know, one of our biggest missions, uh, I, the world is a big place and, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of opinions out there. But our, our message is that there is a huge animal heartfelt intelligence if we slow down enough to see it uh-huh. and feel yeah, and, it. And it's so impressive to hear about how, you know, you're well beyond your fear because there you are sitting in a, in a field trying to interact with a lion. I mean, not, not well, many people the other, do that. Um, this is, well, there was a safety aspect. There was a fence between us, uh-huh. okay. which allowed me even more say because uh-huh. uh, one of the groups of lions, for example, there was four of them, and you'll see it on one of our videos. Every day I sat at the same place, and every day these guys would walk an acre over to me, get into position, sit down, and start going to sleep. So they were coming for their therapy session. Now, Uh it was a wonderful thing because there was a big area that us human beings, either consciously or non-consciously, we don't realize how much we can actually intrude on an animal's space. Um, You know, again, not regarding them. And, you know, some, some... techniques could actually manipulate an animal and they wouldn't want that they wouldn't come every day for that session sure so the fact we were separated by a fence actually for me was even more profound because we didn't need touch you know this goes way beyond the level of touch Mm -hmm. and a lot of people want that touch from animals and i have (laughs) to share with them that that is an emotional level and there is so if we look at ourselves as three beings the physical emotional mm-hmm. and then spiritual um, physical let's just keep it simple flesh and blood the emotional just to keep it really simple thinking and then mm-hmm. this spiritual part which just to keep it simple i will call peace of mind so what happens when we work on this level is that we go beyond the emotions we go beyond an emotional love and we hit a true, authentic, unconditional love, which is in that peace of mind. So this sounds like it's not only profound for the animals, but for the humans who are implementing this technique. I I can't express the feeling in words to you. I can't Mm. express uh, what it's like to sit down with a herd of horses where you've got 11 horses lying down, half of them fast asleep with you. Uh-huh. Um. And <laughs> you've got um, such beautiful videos on your website, including you know some some guidance about how to do the meditations and, and how to implement the trust technique. Again, what is your website? It's trust hyphen technique dot com. When you go on to the website, there's a little pop up that opens on the right. And if you click on there, we give free access to 35 hours worth of videos that shows you exactly how to do the trust technique. Yeah, and that's so impressive because 
these videos are beautiful, they're informative, and I'm just so impressed with what you're doing, James. I'm, I'm so grateful that you're in the world and, and, and showing up in this way, not only for animals, but for humans and the world. It, 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 it's just so inspiring and so impressive. Thank you, James. Oh, that's, that's very heartfelt. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure to be here. And it's, it's been a joy having you here. And I want to encourage um, our listeners, if you're interested in this, if you're interested in, in helping to shift our relationship with animals and shift our world, um, to go to trusttechnique.com with a hyphen between trust and technique uh, because it is beautiful work. And I want to thank you for joining us here today, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www.StellarReflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.TransformationTalkRadio.com. Transformation Talk Radio.com.